So I believe it is streaming us over as it usually does. It does take a, a, a time to do so. But nevertheless, welcome to the live. Um, come on in, I'll let a few of you go ahead and join us, but come on in and join us, please. I will let a few of you join in on the action. Come on in and join us. So I did something new to my hair today, so I hope you guys like it. It took me a while to do it, this quarantine hair. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, you always know Chantel is always late to the chair, but she is finishing up her last minute touches. And I am going to share this video with you all. So come on in and join us for those of you that just came on. Like it. Come on in and join us. All right, so we have a special guest. I am so excited that she has decided and agreed to join us today. Um, listen, she's hilarious. I had the opportunity to have a conversation with her with one of our good friends, our brother, and I believe this is absolutely gonna be, oh, welcome. Hi. <laughs> So I think last time we kind of learned our lesson, we were um, a little too far back mm -hmm. and you guys couldn't hear us. So this time we wanted to make sure we adjust the sound and that you guys could hear us. But now that you're here, how was your week? Um, this week was... Um, it was a good week. I, um, as you all can recall, last week my car was down and um, yeah. I got it fixed. Yes, I did. I got it fixed. Yeah. And um, I was so excited that it was being fixed that um, I almost broke my leg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, the guy was at the house fixing the car and um, he asked me for my driver's license so that he could use my um, car for the payment. And um, I turned around too quick and uh, kind of stepped off of the, my, my porch. Um, kind of, you know, I didn't mess up my leg, but it was hurting just for a little bit. So yeah, but my car is fixed, nonetheless. Um, work is work. We are, uh, since the city um, is starting to reopen as of Monday, um, because I work for the hospital, um, my area will start to pick up again. So mm -hmm. all of my employees that I had working in the actual hospital, um, we're going to send them back home um, for them to um, join my team again. Um, so we can make sure that um, all our patients can have their appointments and everything is cleared. You know, they're good to go. So um, that happened this week as well. Um, this week, she was super extra. Like she did a lot this week. Um, a lot of phone calls and, and uh, <laughs> she's just being really <laughs> aggravating, <laughs> uh, especially today. So um, that's kind of been my week. It, it was an easy week. I, I won't complain. I have no complaints um, about my week. Um, except for that, she was being a kid this I week. Wasn't being a kid quite, <laughs> but I love my friend and she has an Apple Watch. So if you have an Apple Watch and somebody call you, we already know that the call comes straight to the Apple Watch. Therefore, who wears their Apple Watch once they get home? Who? I don't have an Apple Watch. Comment in the comments <laughs> if you wear your Apple Watch once you get home. People want to have to watch when they get home. I do not. Anyway, if you had a great week, come <laughs> come in great. And um, we are opening up on Monday. So I don't know. I don't know if it's just Florida opening up, but comment how you feel about that. Like I'm not, I'm not going nowhere. I am not going outside <laughs> until I know for sure that um COVID-19 um the rates of people getting it is going down. It's right. the, it's climbing. Like Georgia opened up and a, a thousand, thousand new cases, yes. a thousand new cases thousand. appear. So I don't think I'll be doing that. I won't. I won't be going anywhere either. Yeah, I will um, not. My mm -hmm. area um, is not due to possibly even go back into the office, and it's possibly right um, until like July. They're talking about, um, as far as I know, 
So um, I encourage my team members um, to stay home and, and be um, safe. I did find out yesterday that uh, one of my cousins was um, diagnosed with COVID-19. Um, so thank you um, to my cousin, um, Tasha, we love you. Um, yes, her and her daughter, yeah, she's an essential worker. She's a mm -hmm. nurse. Um, she contracted it from a patient um, and she took it home to her daughter. Um, but they are coping well. So you all please pray um, for her and her daughter. Um, and um, again, we just found out yesterday, but we believe that, you know, God will continue to keep them. Amen. So Argina told us to go first, to go outside first, and then she'll call in two weeks and check on us. So that won't be happening. <laughs> We're going to wait until this first wave of people, because I, I just got a feeling that um, it's going to be a lot of people that can't contract this um, virus in the next couple weeks once they open up. So um, be safe, guys. Wash your hands. Put your face mask on. It's serious. As a, from one healthcare professional to another, if you guys are healthcare professionals or if you just are an essential worker or just home and really, you're ready to get out of the house, we do understand that. But please be safe. Please. please. Nevertheless, I am Sharice Nicole. I am Coco Chantel. And you are watching or streaming into mm -hmm. BTA bestie BTA. sell all. So um, you guys are kind of joined in to not really um, listen to us talk, really. um, but you guys tune in because we have a phenomenal guest that is on the show today. Her name is Sophia Watkins, but before she um, reveals herself, she is the mother of Nathan Davis Jr. He is a prominent actor in Hollywood. Yes. He's a young, um, a young guy, but man, he has a beautiful voice. He does. But that is, you know, she's known for that, but she is known for her TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, she has a little bit close, almost a million followers. <laughs> she's about 600 right now, 600,000 followers on TikTok. Um, her and her son does these amazing singing challenges. I hope one day she'll let me, you know, do no, a sing. I might do a, a I might do a singing challenge tonight on the on the live. Mm. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> um, but she does these amazing um, singing challenges with her son. Um, uh, most of their TikTok averages anywhere between. Um, 300,000 to a million, a million. views. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're hilarious, but it's, they're, it's talent. Like, yes. it's raw yes. talent. Her son has a phenomenal voice. She has a phenomenal voice. He never lets her win. <laughs> he and, <does. laughs> but she has a phenomenal voice. Like, it is amazing. She's a comedian. She's an actress. She's a, social, a CEO, social media mom. She's all of that, guys. She's, all, she's a video <laughs> fan. <laughs> she's been in a couple of videos. Um, <clears throat> and so she's a video vixen. But without further ado, you guys did not, again, did not. come to see us. Please welcome to the Zoom, Miss Sophia, Sophia Watkins. <laughs> Well, yes, so how y'all doing? Oh, you look doing? so beautiful. Thank you so do you. Thank you, darling. I like to part down the middle and on the side, you know? Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Thank you. You just never, you know, versatility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, she's giving, she's giving me Jasmine. Jim, what? The singer. Mm -hmm. yeah. You break the windows <laughs> out the car. What's her name, Jack? Huh? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How you holding up? Great. I am loving this time off. You know, so I get up, get dressed, put my hair, makeup on, to sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> You just to look at yourself, you know, you got to smell good. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You got yourself most definitely. <laughs> How is um, are you guys open in California? No, we're not, not yet, not yet. But you can't tell because really? oh, yeah. baby, they, they were at the beaches, no mask. 
Mm -hmm. They went Capitol Hall. Yeah, um, you can't tell that they're not open, but no, we're not open yet. Wow. Wow. So people are just still not practicing social distancing. Uh -uh, they do what they do. They're not staying home or anything. Mm -mm. No, so people got arrested, um, I think, over the weekend um, for being out because they're not wearing their masks. Like you said, they're not practicing social distancing. So they're taking it very seriously. There's a lot of people here. Yeah. It's it a lot is. of people, yeah. We, we were in California for Thanksgiving. I don't, I, it was our first, it was my first time going mm -hmm. to California. Okay. Um, y'all are not friendly. Well, I'm, you know, I'm from Tennessee. From okay. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm an implant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are not friendly there. And I was ready to go home. We were there for like five oh, days. No, I'm we sorry. were there for almost seven days. Okay, so it was almost seven days. So we were there and, you know, people bump into you. They don't say, excuse me. They don't hold doors. They have like, no, I, I'm accustomed to the Southern hospitality here in Florida, yeah. but they have none there. And I was so ready to go. I was so upset about that. I was, I'm just not used to it. So I was like, I don't want to go there. Well, you know what I was told once? I was told that they don't think that it's the people who were born here that has the attitude is the people that come from other places. Yes, it is. That's what I was that's, told. Yeah, that's what we noticed while we were, um, while, like when I told her, I said, well, um, I don't think it's the natives that's bumping into mm -hmm. you. It's it's the, you know, it's the other others. nationalities. Yeah, and, and I think that's the part of their culture, you right. know, not yeah. just kind of going about, you know, they don't make anything of it. They're shocked. Like, they they're know. not they were thinking about that, so. Yeah, that sometimes they don't consider your, your space. Mm -hmm. some, some, some that too. You know. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. some of y'all were probably happy for social distancing in California because when we were there, they did not practice. They didn't. Day. Not in November. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yeah, are yeah, not. Yeah. We were in line and they were in line with us. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, yeah. let me tell you about one of my um my my stories. I was uh shopping um at a rest at a at like a little place it wasn't like a really big um store it was a little small store like a dollar tree or something mm -hmm. so i had this little small little basket and i'm just on the cell phone and i'm just walking and talking and i kept feeling like somebody had their hand in my basket wow so i was just like okay oh, we are in this this large store i mean obviously nobody's trying to steal my stuff because i normally keep my wallet and my keys inside girl i turned around and just started going off i'm not gonna say what i said Mm -hmm. And it was an older lady who was not practicing um, any space sing at all. And this was before this. Oh, she was yes. like basically touching my basket. Mm. Oh, wow. And I turned around and gave her some choice words. And she mm -hmm. was a older lady. Yeah, but well, she was like from another culture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt bad. Well, you know, I got my point across. How bad? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much. So, some of the people on the live may not be familiar with who you are. Okay. Who is Sophia Watkins? Sophia Watkins is a um, mommy manager. I manage my son, um, who is an actor, singer, dancer, a spoiled brat. Um, yeah, so I manage him, and mm -hmm. we we moved to California. Um, 2012 to pursue his his dreams of um you know making it big in Hollywood. Wow. So in the in the interim, when you know he's working, then I can sometimes work as well. So I do, you know, some stand-up every now and then. And um, yeah, some TikTok. Mm -hmm. yeah, some TikTok. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I see that you and your son, you all sing together, right? Mm -hmm. So is music something that is uh, a family trait, family gift? Um, or is it something that, you know, you just kind of grew up with? So you were like, you know, I'll, you know, go this route. And then your son was also given the gift. So how did music kind of come into to the picture? Well, it's uh, so funny you say that my, my grandmother, she's, um, she's deceased now. But her and her sister, they um, traveled um, singing. It was a singing duo. 
And when I was born, um, my sister's a year younger than me, we started singing and traveling, doing like a duo. Mm -hmm. And so um, my sister, she, she went into track and I stayed into music. Yeah, so um, it's so funny that um, in the early 90s, I actually moved out here to California to do exactly what my son is doing. But a lot of times when you move, you don't know where to start. You know, you don't know who to contact. You don't have any resources. And I had a full-time job. So um, I didn't really get a chance to do a lot of things that was outside of the church. Okay. Um, I started singing in the church when I was three years old. I was singing in the little, what is it, the little children's choir. <laughs> and quiet, like, the children quiet and quite like Tina, uh, 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 Ike's wife. I had a big mouth. <laughs> Anime, come Anime. on. And I was trying to take on you know, the solo. They was like, "Baby, can you calm down? This is a quiet. This is not you being the leader." <laughs> yeah. So, nevertheless, they said, "Well, we're going to make you a leader." And I started singing, I started directing, I started writing songs. Um, I was recording with different people. Um, my son, when he was born, it's so funny, before he could talk, he could sing. Wow. He was 10 months old. He wasn't even walking yet. He started late walking, but he could sing. He was kind of mimicking what he would hear me do. Okay. And um, yeah, the rest is history. He started singing. Um, I, I used to manage other people in Memphis and I thought, you know, well, maybe if I can manage other artists, I can manage my son. Wow. And we had to die. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm going to take the second one if that's okay. <laughs> so how do you feel um, about your son picking up something that you love so much as much as singing? Well, let me say this. I was raised in the church. A lot of people don't know this, but I was licensed in the church and I was ordained in the church, okay? So wow. to sing anything other than gospel music was a taboo, you know? So just because you can sing, mm -hmm. they wanted you to use that, those gifts for God, but they felt like the only way you can use right. those gifts were in the, in the church walls. Um, during right. Right. my time singing right. in church, um, I was, you know, misunderstood. Uh, being a, I'm a single parent, a lot of times people look at you a little differently. You know, you don't have a person or your man to kind of help defend you. So I learned how to defend myself real early. And when my son started showing interest in singing, I said to him, you do not have to sing gospel just because you can sing. Just make sure that what you do, you can glorify God with that, with that you, that you have. And so that's kind of pretty much how he got into it. Um, he was really shy early on. So I never forced him to start singing like in front of people. But as soon as his passion, I guess, caught up with his gift, mm -hmm. then we started. Okay, that's good. Once he became passionate about it. Now that's key, I believe, to success is that your passion has to match your gift. Absolutely. There are a lot of talented people out here, but they don't have the drive or a sense of accountability. And so their gift goes unnoticed. Absolutely. But when that, when that passion and that gift collide, it's an amazing collision Absolutely. Um, and, and birth exposure and birth um, um, more gifts and expansion. Like it, it is, yeah. So that's key. Um, I have a question for you, though, and I know we talked about this early on before the live, um, but I want you to talk about what you are sacrificing as a, as a mom, as a, one, as a single mother that also is very talented, is a stand-up comedian, has been at commercials, movies, all this other stuff, mm -hmm. to what are you sacrificing to push your son's dream? Wow, that's a loaded question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can say that before my son graduated from high school, I already had my life planned out. Um, as a single mom, I didn't believe in a lot of dating in front of my son. My son was young, he was impressionable. 
Um, and I didn't want anybody to come in and to mess that up. I want him to develop at his own pace in his own way and whatever that looked like for him. I wanted him to have that. And so for me, I was like, when he graduates from high school, <laughs> I'm gonna get my life back, my <laughs> social life. And I'm gonna get me a strip of hole, put it in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, church. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, saints. Sorry, saints. But if you're married, you have too. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so my, my plan was to get, get my pole <laughs> and to entertain. Mm -hmm. Find my boys. You hear me? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. so my son came to me in his final year of high school um, and said he wanted to move to California to pursue this music. And he wanted me to come along with him. And so um, I had a house in Memphis. I tried renting, renting it out for a few years, didn't work. For whatever reason, people think that if you live in California, you got money. No, baby. Mm -mm. It's, very it's very, very expensive to live here. So the tenants that I would have in, in there, they wouldn't pay the rent on time. Uh, nevertheless, um, I had to get rid of the house. I had to sell it. Wow. So I sold the house. Now I'm living in California. Um, we're living in a duplex at the time when we first moved here for a year. God was good. I had a best friend that lived here and we stayed there for a year. After the year was up, they sold the place. Wow. They sold it. Now, mind you, because I'm very, I'm so tunnel vision when it comes down to implementing and executing plans. So I don't really mm -hmm. have a lot of friends that, you know, I talk to on a daily basis, um, especially the ones out here in California. So I found myself without a home. Wow. So one of my sacrifices was that I stayed here homeless. I stayed here. Um, I, I really don't share this, this um, with anybody, but I had to stay in a kind of, it, was, it wasn't a homeless shelter, but it was a, ho a, a hotel for homeless people. Wow. For two weeks. With a home in another state. I had a home in another state. It was wow. empty. I didn't have a tenant. But nothing inside of me said, oh, you know, pack it up and leave because my situation was so crazy. So I, it was just never an option to, to leave. So I stayed, my son went to stay with some friends um, in Hollywood. That was the first time that we had ever been separated as a mother and son. A um, Couple months later, um, we were able to get a place and it wasn't in the best neighborhood, but we knew that we wanted more Right. And I just started thinking about it. I said, you know what? I want to live in this area, which was like Hollywood, North Hollywood, because I knew that I wanted to be closer to the industry because the, the commute was, was crazy. Right. And uh, we moved here six years ago and we've been here ever since. Wow. wow. So yeah, so giving that up, giving up my home, uh, becoming homeless. Um, as I shared with you the other day, you know, my health, you know, I'm a person that, like I said, I have tunnel vision. And when I worked a nine to five in corporate America, you worked your nine to five and you went home. Mm -hmm. You did your 48 hours on Saturday Sun. You know, that was your mm -hmm. 48. But when you're working in the industry, you really don't have time off. Because when you're sleeping, somebody else is grinding. Wow. So, I, so, I, so nevertheless, I lost a lot of sleep, which entails bothers your health. You know, so my son is young. He can care less. You know, he's doing his thing. He's like, oh, mom, what we be doing? You know, I'm like, I'm trying to get some rest. Because, mm -hmm. you know, your body will stop you. Yes. Yes, it will. Yes. Stop you and say, okay, but we, we need to slow mm -hmm. down. Oh, you know, definitely. so, yeah. So pretty much my health, like I said, relationships. I don't really have a lot of friends here in, in California. Okay. And, um, yeah. And, you know, the house. Wow. So um, a question that I have, I was going through um, your Instagram mm -hmm. and I saw that you and Nathan did a video um, of, I believe it was gun violence. Yes. Um, and how, um, you know, 
right now, you know, it's still affecting, even though coronavirus has, you know, kind of taken over the news, we know that there's still some of that happening out there. And um, when I saw it, I called um, Sharice and I was like, I watched this video, you know, you have to see it. Um, what are some of the fears that you have as it relates to your son um, and what he does? And, um, you know, even with the gun violence, you know, is that even a fear or concern of yours? Yes, it's, it's so funny you mentioned that um, a couple of nights ago, we actually were pulled over by the police. Wow. He was driving, it was his vehicle. And I was just like, okay, why is this guy pulling us over? Were you speeding? He was like, I wasn't speeding. So the guy gets out and, you know, he sees me in the car. So, you know, okay, it's an adult, it's an older person. My son looks very young. And he said, well, you know, you look like you were, um, weaving in and out of the lane. He was like, have you been drinking? Um, do, you know, you've been smoking something. Now my son has never ever smoked or drank anything in his life. Not to say that, you know, he shouldn't or people couldn't, he's an adult, but he chooses not to. So I was just like, wow. I mean, that's, that's your first thing you go to drinking, you know, smoking. So he actually, we didn't have to get out the car, but he put the um, light in his eyes, was looking at his eyes. And, um, you know, he was able to, you know, get away without a ticket. But right. you're absolutely correct. Living in California, I was here uh, before in the 90s with the Rodney King incident. Mm. So I experienced firsthand, um, you know, somebody being brutally beaten by the hands of the police officers. And not all officers are, right. you know, that way. You know, they're not. But I, I actually saw that. In it, I mean, they played it every day. You know, we saw that for years. Um, that is one of my biggest fears. In the middle of the night, it's hard for me to stay to stay asleep. My son is the type of person, I'm like his best friend. Mm -hmm. So if he sees someone, if he um, he's out doing something and something happens, he doesn't care if it's three o'clock in the morning, he's gonna call me. I got something to tell you, that's what happened. But for me, I'm thinking that it's that call. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you know I'm, I'm in jail. Um, the police got me, you know, pulled over. Um, so yes, it's, it's a real big fear. When we decided to do that song, the artist XXX, um, he was just murdered, you know, just in the middle of the street. There was another young man who was also murdered in New York. He was, I think, 15 or 16 years old. He was murdered, um, false identity by some gang members. And so when I heard the song Changes, I said, you know what? Everyone always talks about the victim and they talk about the, the person who does the murder, whether it's the police officers or is, you know, gang members, but nobody ever thinks about the mother. Wow. Nobody ever talks about, how do you think a mother feels that she's lost her teenage or young son or daughter due to violence? You know, especially those that had so, so much life still ahead of them. So when I, when we wrote the song, we re, we rearranged it, did like a remix. And that's the take that I wanted to take on. And I said to my son, I said, um, everybody has a mother. Yes. I want to have a mother. I said, this is going to be so relatable because that mm -hmm. is the point I wanted to make. You know, you're not just taking away that person, but you are doing something um, you're killing that mother, you know, that father, their siblings, and people, I mean, they grieve forever. Yeah. Right. forever. It's, it's, you know, it's crazy to, to lose a child before you pass away. Right. Yeah. You know, my grandmother, she buried all of her daughters prior to her passing and she had uh, four daughters. So all of, you know, including my mom passed before my grandmother, um, you know, left this earth. So just watching her kind of go through the process of losing the child, definitely, I don't think anybody, any mom, any parent prepares to, to bury their child prior to them. You know, right. you don't plan to bury your, no. your child. You, you don't. You, to, you know, give, leave them something when you leave. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, we, while we're on the subject of fear, you know, what are some fears or like, man, uh, something, the worst thing that can happen to your son while he's in the industry. Hmm. You know, we hear that the industry is a beast 
And, um, uh, you know, Jay and Beyonce have a song that says, welcome to Hollywood. It ain't for everybody. Yeah. And sometimes people come and they get swallowed up in the hype and the life and the lights and everything else that they lose themselves. So like, what is your fear surrounding that with your son and with yourself? Because you're a part of Hollywood too. Yes. Well, I, I will say that the culture here in, in California um, is different than what we experience living in Tennessee. Okay. Um, in, in Memphis, Tennessee, you have the Bible Belt. You know what I'm saying? So like you just said earlier, people, are, they're, they're, they're a little bit more respectful. Um, if someone is, let's say if someone is, a, a, a guy is sitting there drinking a 40 ounce or something. If an elderly person walks by, they're going to try to hide it just out of respect. Mm -hmm. You know, and when she walks by and she's gone, they're going to pick it up and they're going to consume their beverage. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, out here in California, it's, you know, you, you, who you are. I mean, do what you do, be who you are. Um, certain things are so accessible mm. and almost like peer pressure. Um, I think you probably heard, I think a couple of weeks ago, they had this challenge on Instagram. I think it's something about roll the blunt or take in so many puffs or something on the blunt. And, and they showed Snoop Dogg who was like, you know, Godfather. Of right. The, you know, <laughs> and so somebody said, well, when, when Snoop Dogg passed you a blunt, you can't turn it down. Wow. What if you don't smoke? You're right. I mean, I mean, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna hit it just because? And again, not saying there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that if that's not who you are, that's not what you do. Right. Don't allow other people to change you or turn you into something else. Right. So wow. for me, um, and it's so funny because like the whole time we've been here, every year my son goes back to Tennessee for for Christmas, um, and Houston for Christmas because I want to keep him grounded. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So he, we go back every year because I want him to, you know, see his family, the people who don't want nothing from you. They just, they, you know, you Nate. Right. And for me, I'm Lynn. Back home. Lynn. 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 I'm Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and so I think that it keeps you grounded. Um, the good thing about my son and I, we, we have like a, a love-hate relationship. Because a lot of times it's difficult for me to be mom because I'm being manager. Okay. And, and, and when you think of manager, you think of coach. Mm -hmm. And if you guys ever, you know, play sports um, with cheerleaders, you didn't nobody like the coach. He was real. He, you know, he, his thing was, I want to see you be greater than I was, or I want you to be great. So I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell you like it is. If it's not good, it's not good. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you can do better, I'm going to tell you you can do, do better. Right. But a lot of times, you know, he rejects or it's hard for him to receive that. And a lot of the younger people in the industry, like Usher and some of the other ones, Trey Songs, you know, um, they all kind of came into the industry very, very young. A lot of times their mothers are their first managers, but then they grew up a little bit and feel like, you know, I think I want somebody else who's going to be hmm. different. Hmm. And, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you start seeing some changes in your bank account, your car. And then you know, what happened to my money? <laughs> your mama, you know, your mama would have taken some of your money. She would have left you something, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm, absolutely. <laughs> so the biggest, I guess, thing for me is feel like you said for him not get caught up um, in just a lot of stupid stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I can say Chris Brown. I love Chris Brown to death. I think he's so talented. I think he has been a major influence uh, musically for people uh, younger than him. But unfortunately, because of that one mistake. One. One time. One. People one. are unforgiven. Very much so. Yes. There's no grace. No. And, and that, do you believe that there's no grace in the industry when there's one mistake? Yes. But it depends on who you are. But yes, most of the time, look at Bill Cosby. You know, yes. I don't know if he did it or not. I mean, right. we don't know. But nobody, nobody cared that for 70 years he was doing what we know 
Say he was our dad. You know, he was all of our TV no. dad. Nobody, no, cared. Not you know, <laughs> you know, not nobody not cared because after that one or uh, that one mistake, is mm -hmm. like you, you going down, bro. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. So, um, with that, I would ask, um, with you managing um, your son, and then you also have things going on. How do you think you balance that? Like, how well do you think you balance all of that being momager um, and then also, you know, being a comedian and, and singing and, you know, all of the other things that is Sophia? Well, with the TikTok um, platform, it's the video is only 15 seconds. Right. Really longer than that. But I think that I've kind of found a way to still do what I want to do with stand up with comedy and still manage him. I don't have to leave the house to do TikTok. Right. Um, right. When I am like taking classes for stand up, if I am, you know, shooting something like recently, I shot a um, commercial for Facebook. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Girl. When I tell you we shot for five days. Yeah, and when I every day my feet and my my knees were swollen because the head is out there on that uh, asphalt. Oh, mm -hmm. They did not care how old you were. They you booked a job. I need you to run up and down these stairs for the mm -hmm. next ten hours. Wow, you know. So for me to do that, um, yes, Nathan had a lot of things that I you know I needed to help him with as well. But I had to say to him, you know, this is my time. Let me take this time off to do something for me. You know what I'm saying? It's going to eventually help us both because those residual checks. Come on. Here, here. Here, here. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> A little chi chi. Come on, you know, somebody. Hello. Um, so although you are his manager and you are his mom, mm -hmm. <laughs> What do, and she asked you, how do you balance it? But what do you do for yourself? Like you're in California, most of your family is in Memphis, right? Yeah. Yes. And you don't really have a lot of friends there. So what are you doing to like self-care, self-love, Sophia? I can't say it on, on a live, but um, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. So um, I do uh, <laughs> I go get massages quite quite frequently. Mm -hmm. Um, I it's so funny when I did the commercial. I did the commercial at the end of December, and normally Nathan and I, like I was saying earlier, we would go to Tennessee and Texas, Houston, Texas, for the holidays. I decided to do something different. So we split. He went to Texas and I went to New Jersey for about a week um, and, you know, and, and had fun with, with my wife family and the dogs. So I did that. Um, some of the people that I met on, <laughs> three dogs, three. Yeah, family of four and three dogs. That was a lot of us. But, uh, <laughs> My, uh, I met a couple of people in the commercial and we stayed friends. So um, one, one of the, the, the guys, we hang out, we'll go eat, you know what I'm saying? We'll go um, just do things together. So just like you said, just getting a break um, from doing what I do with him. Um, I still haven't mastered dating yet. I've tried it. It's a little rough. It's a little rough out here for us brown skin girls. It's a little rough. My hair. Yeah, it's rough. It's a little rough. You know, because yeah. most of the people out here, they're very, very, very healthy, health conscious, you know, there's, you know, vegetarians, vegans. I like meat, chicken, fish. I like chicken too. I like chicken too. Beef. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to deprive myself of food. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Oh, God. oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> what? I know you've 
mentioned um, Facebook and then you have TikTok. Yes. What are some of the other platforms that you um, have been a part of or privileged to grace? Well, um, I have a friend. Uh, I, I, he may be watching. Um, he's a director. He's a writer. Um, he's an actor. His name is Levi Otis. If he's watching. <laughs> But uh, we actually used to live um, in, in the same house. And so we became friends. And when he does projects, he, he always calls me to do something, whether it's you know, leading role, or if it's um, you know, a cameo in another one of his uh, web series. So I do web series. Um, I've, I've done some TV stuff. There was this show several years ago that I did. It was called Sex Sent Me to the ER. It was kind of like a kind of like a document documentary style, but they have the, the real people. They kind of narrate what happened, and then they they hire actors and actresses to act it out. Right. And so um, they hired me to to play one girl's mother, and it was so funny because I was so nervous. That was really like one of my first gigs, and they, the casting director had told me she was like, "Don't come in here improvising." I need for you to say the, the lines word for word. Girl, you talking about scared. Because <laughs> it's, it's something about being unnatural, mm -hmm. standing in front of a camera and another person, and you just you two in the room. You know, if it's a, a, a building or a place where I'm on stage and it's 500 people out there, I'm going to turn it on, girl. I'm going to run on that stage. I'm going to jump around. I'm going to do whatever. But you and one other person, and she's just staring at you. <laughs> You don't know if you did a great job or you right. sucked. Right. So I did it. I was, you know, I was like, oh my God, I hope I get this right. They they booked me. Mm -hmm. Once they booked me, I was I went on set. I would th I think I was supposed to only have two scenes, but the uh, director said he thought I was so funny, girl. He turned around right on set and wrote me in three more scenes. Wrote wow. them right there, and was like, I just want you to improv. Just girl, you crazy. Just do you. <laughs> it's funny. Do you? Absolutely. And that's how people got that one little clip where I was like, sex? And my eyes bucked out. That thing went viral. <laughs> 27 million on Vine. Wow. 27 million people saw that on Vine. And then somebody found it on Instagram and put it on, it was something like hood, hood videos or something. <laughs> viral again. I said, I'm viral. I'm funny. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm 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 so wow. yeah, and that was that's kind of what kind of gave me the courage to just keep going and you know writing. I write a lot of jokes. Um, yeah. So, like I said, TV, um, and then there are a lot of social media people that live here in California who they don't have their parents here, so they call me. I'm like the social media mom. Oh, wow. I'm social media mom. You got like Daystorm, you got Adam W, you got Diamond. They'll call me, you know, hey, can your mom come and play my mom? I'm like, sure. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so one time, you had you, you guys didn't see it, but it was Instagram. And so the guy, he, he had asked the director, you know, to find me to do, to do the little social media video with, but he didn't tell me what I was doing. So he was like, just bring some clothes, bring your tank top. He said, bring you some, uh, some like some jogging pants. He said, bring your little a dress. That's okay. So I said, I'm here for it. So we get get together. And so Nathan said, so what do you want my mom to do? So the actor, he was like, you don't know what you're going to be doing? I said, no. He said, he said well, I'm going to need you to get in bed with me naked. I said, I'm here for it. Where we go? Where is it? Where the bed at? Where we doing? But I wasn't naked, but I, but <laughs> he was so embarrassed. He was like, naked was like, man, that's my mom. So actually I had like a little tank top that I just rolled down. Uh, I, I'm about to send you guys a video. It was hilarious. Please so, send it to us so we can please. share. <laughs> so we in the bed, in the bed. They were like, what the, yeah. So yeah, I, I do, I love that. Um, you know, the, the young kids, they do come to me and ask me to play their mom. And so I, I just call myself, you know, the, 
the CEO of Social Social Media Moms. Wow. You know, you're talking about collaborations. So who would you like give me the top three, five if you must, people in the industry that you would love to collaborate with? I would love to collaborate with mm. Queen Latifah. Yes. I love her. I love her. I like her. I like how she's diversified. Yes. Herself. I love that. And then she's not like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to work with her. I would love to work with Martin Lawrence. Of course. Yes. Of course. Uh, Of course. Yes. And one other person who I did get a chance to meet, um, Tisha Campbell. Really? She's so funny. Naturally. Okay. I can see that. Okay. Naturally. Naturally funny. Yeah. She is so funny. Yeah. I, I got a chance to meet with her. Um, you know, she used to have a nightclub here, her and her husband at the time, <laughs> big husband. And Nathan and I would go and Nathan would sing. And she wow. was so nice. We, we would go to her house. Can me to what I did one time? <laughs> her cousin. Her cousin um, they were having like 4th of July or something. And we would go over there when we were invited and we would bring something, you know, whatever it was you bring. And she lived in a gated community where, you know, when you drive up, the guard is there, 24 hour guard that has to call and say, you know, do you know Sophia here? Yes, let her in. Well, I had talked to her cousin. He was like, well, they have having 4th of July over to teach us. Why don't you go over, but just bring something. So <laughs> Nathan and I, we went and got water, big old things of water. And we drive up, they let us through. We get there, we're the only car there. It was just her and her family. It's nobody else. So we just, I was just like, I'm sorry. I thought she was having a gathering for everybody. She's like, come on in. Just come on in. She's like, I just, like, just, all I have is the hot dogs. I thought, we gonna take a hot dog today. Absolutely. But that was like, Nathan was so embarrassed. Oh, Jesus. I, I read that wrong. I'm sorry. I read that. <laughs> Just I read that wrong. So, I'm sorry. I have a question. <laughs> what um, advice would you give to other momagers in the industry or even up and coming um, people who will be in the industry and their mom will manage them? What advice do you have for them? Run! Get out of here! <laughs> Get the out of here! <laughs> I can say this, it is the it is a job that you will be underappreciated. I can tell you that now. You'll be underappreciated. A lot of times I'm the fall guy for mistakes, for um, any decision that it happens, I, I normally make that decision. So if it ends up bad, it's my fault, okay? But what I will say is that if you are a, a, a lady, a woman in this business, keep it professional. Mm-hmm. You can't go around dating all the executives. Very good. Because sometimes they will try. Wow. But you keep it professional so that you can be respected. Right. Um, for me, one thing that I do that normally works for me is that when I walk into the room, I walk into the room as the mother. But I am analyzing, observing, putting it all together. What you say, what you don't say. You feel me? Because the thing is, if you think that I don't know the industry, then you're going to come out of your bag and you're going to show me what it is that you're trying to do. So Mm -hmm. for me, I I already know what's going on. I shouldn't already know that if he writes a song, his percentages, he should get publishing. Right. As an artist, he should get something, even though he didn't write. I said, well, they don't know that I know that. You know what I'm saying? So we've already started our own LLC, our own uh, label. Um, we have, you know, our own production. We have our own studio here. Uh-huh. Um, so I've been writing. We have our own publishing companies. But a lot of people don't know that because they just think I'm mama. And I bring a big old bucket of spaghetti girl. Hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Y'all want some spaghetti? <laughs> hey! So they be like, oh, she cool. She don't know. Right. And then once they show their hand, then, then that's when, you know, mama just come out. 
right you know and then I have to do what I got to do negotiating um for me as, as a as a woman as a mother sometimes I take things personal mm-hmm. because you know it you do is your child or is your relative you know someone come to you and say well I'm, I want to offer you a hundred thousand dollars to do this concert but technically they really got a million dollars I feel some kind of way you tried it and I'm gonna let you know but a lot of times you can't you can't get upset it's like they tried it you just gotta you know just get your lawyers involved and say you know what that's not gonna work for us and, you know keep your hundred thousand keep it moving so we, when I tell you, we've turned down so many deals and contracts, many. Because, because in my mind, they were slave contracts. They were contracts right. that would keep you locked in for pretty much the rest of your career. Career. You know, where you are the employee. And that's not why we came out here. We didn't come out here to be the employee. We came out here to create jobs for other people. Right. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. And that's why I start, started the label. I want, I want to create jobs for others. I don't, I don't want to be the person who gets the, 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 the what is it, the scraps. Because mm-hmm. you know? a, a lot of the kids in the industry, when they first get signed their first year, girl, they're like, ooh, I'm signed. And they were like, oh my God, you got a vouch. Somebody vouched for you. I'm over here in this label. I'm over here in this studio. And then it just stopped about 12 months later. The money that ran out. Mm-hmm. And you like, either if you if you became successful off of that first project, great. If not, you just on the shelf. They're not going to let you go because they gave you, you know, $500,000, a million dollars up front. So it's like, oh, well, until we re- recoup that, then you're here. So, we, you know, you can't do that. You know, we need you to sit here and tr- figure it out on your own now, which you should have done in the first place. Right. Right. <laughs> and that's why I say, right. I say, you know, it may take you longer to get there, but you're going to be the boss. Wow, absolutely. So, but like Nathan, he's in his 20s, right? Yes. So does age play a factor, like with mm-hmm. you being his mom? And like you say, you're older not old but older how does that play a part with okay scenario you're at an audition and they're casting right Mm -hmm. does age play a factor in who gets the role does gender race or is it just based on casting need like what they're looking for for that cast member Nathan, uh, the category that Nathan is in is 18 to play younger. Okay. So 18 to play younger are people who are, for the most part, 18 or over, but they look younger. Mm-hmm. Um, for the casting and for the directors, it helps them because when you're 18 and over, they can work you more hours. Mm-hmm. So if you're 15, 16, and you work in a job as a 15, 16, after so many hours, they have to give you a break. They have to pay for an on-set teacher or a social worker to come and make sure you're getting your meals, you're getting your breaks. But with an adult, they can just work them nonstop. They can give you a five minute, 10 minute, no break. And there's nothing you can, you know what I'm saying, really do about that. So Nathan's category is 18 to play younger. Um, the roles that he do not typically get are the roles that they want him to be older. So let's say if he's going out for NCIS and they're looking for um, a mortician or the, the person who helps out with the bodies. Well, normally those people are at least 22, 23 because they've graduated from college, right? Right. Well, he doesn't even look that, I mean, he doesn't look that old. So a lot of times he goes in and he may kill it, right. but then he look at that little face and be like, child, you look 16. <laughs> You know, so it has really um, bothered him a lot because of that. I can tell you this, in the last year, it has been really um, hard on him with acting. It's because he is getting older and he's now gaining a little weight. He's like, you know, getting his body, Mm -hmm. uh, he's getting his man body. Mm -hmm. So when you get your man body, you gotta have some muscles, okay? 
Can't some- keep your little boy body with no chest. <laughs> can't keep your little boy body with no abs. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is that now I think he's in he's in between. So I'm like, so you're either gonna have to play the neighbors, funny, comic relief. You know what I'm saying? In that role where you can be whatever size you want to be. You don't have to be, you know, leading man size or you're going to have to get that body where it needs to be. So then now you can jump up to the leading man role in some bigger films, TV shows, because it's all about the look at the end of the day. That's it. That's it. They already know what they envision. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in the door, they know, they may say, like, I just auditioned today. I had a set tape. Um, and they, they're just looking for women, it, whatever. And it's, uh, it's whatever, whatever size, whatever sexuality, whatever you are, that's what they're looking for. So you don't have to try to say, well, I look big in this. I mean, we're all black. No, just, I mean, actors come in all sizes, shapes, ages, you know, sexualities, no hair, with hair, makeup, no makeup, pretty, ugly. I mean, whatever, it, we, we need them all. We need them all. Don't you guys remember the lady that was in um, uh, what is that movie? Black Panther. That older lady. Mm-hmm. She was like, I don't know, her eighties or something. That was her first acting role. But they needed someone in her age bracket. Oh, wow. when they were getting ready to do that, uh, the fight scene. Yes, you re- yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They needed somebody in that in that age bracket. Um, so age doesn't really matter. It's more of the look. Mm. It's the look. It's the look. If you can look a certain way. If you go in and, and you're playing a, um, like you're in the military, I mean, you need to look like you could play someone that's in the military. Right. If your hair is too long, I mean, nobody in the military has long hair. Guys, they have short hair. You know what right. I'm saying? If you're not willing to cut your hair off, then, mm, you know, I know we don't have a whole lot of time, but let me give you another example. You remember that movie, uh, uh, When They See Us? That TV show that was- <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Well, that young man who played, um, oh my God, he, I think he won an Emmy off, off of it. He played, uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but um, Corey, he played Corey. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, he's young in real life. He's about 20, 21 years old. When he went in to audition for that role, he had a beard, a mustache, because he was acting on something else and he couldn't change his look for that uh, commitment. When he went in to audition for Ava, and this is what I heard, um, she couldn't see it. She was just like, ah, you know, you know, you can't play 15. You got a beard, got this mustache. I don't see it. So he didn't get the role. But they couldn't find someone who they wanted to look like Corey. So a couple months had gone by. He was out of that contract with that other uh, TV show. He shaved his mustache, shaved his beard, went back and booked it. Wow. Because now they can see. Now, mm-hmm. now I see, I see 15 now. Yeah. <laughs> and then she said, she said, well, I'm gonna give you, you know, a challenge. I saw how you looked older. I want you to play both. Cause normally they don't normally play both. They'll play one right. if play I older, I can, to play the other one. Right. So Nathan auditioned two for that. But again, he was young enough. He can play young, but he wasn't, he didn't look old enough to play the older character. And he looked too old to play the little boys, if that makes right. sense. Yeah, so mm-hmm. he, he gets that a lot. He said a lot. Wow. The in-between. Yeah, the in-between. Yeah. So our show, um, and I think I told you this when we talked, was based and founded on the basis of our friendship. Our friendship. Mm-hmm. And some of the things and the challenges that the challenges that we had as friends, as our relationship has evolved over these 16, 17 years of knowing each other. And, um, you know, when you think about friendship, you know, this is something we ask all of our guests, you know, what does friendship mean to you? Oh, man. Friendship means to me someone who knows you so much Mm. that if you're having an off day, they can recognize that it's not you, that it's something that's bothering you and it won't be a problem. Wow. Won't be a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you. You know what I'm saying? I know you've been there for me. You know what I'm saying? I know, you know, all about you. You know how you are, your temperament. I already know. So for me, like I said, my, my son and I, we are like best friends. 
because it, let me tell you what happened last night. Last night we were at the studio, and this is, it really pissed me off. We were at the studio last night, and he was in there just singing away, going at it, going at it, going at it, and he kept coughing, like, <clears throat> trying to clear his throat. Where the mom and me was like, let me get this boy some water, okay? So he's in the in the booth though with his eyes closed. I open the door and I touch him with the bottle of water. He gets so upset that I uh, he said I scared him. He takes the bottle of water and throw it on the floor. You could have knocked. I said, well, if I would have knocked, you still wouldn't have heard me. You have your, your ear things on. So that kind of pissed me off. But I knew that while he was in, in the booth he was in, he was focused. Right. He was in Although I was like, uh-huh, I got you, little boy. You disrespectful, little boy. Hold this water on your next time. Next time I'm just going to let you just, just, just hurt yourself in there. Keep it going. <laughs> just keep it going. You know, but I, I didn't, you know, I, I was upset for a few minutes and I, t I read him his rights. Mm -hmm. of course. I was in there singing and he was oh you just scared me and it was over boom it was it it was over now if he would have hit me I probably wouldn't be with you today <laughs> <laughs> not unless I had a cell from a <laughs> would have been remote from the jailhouse it would have been remote <laughs> no, <Jesus>. oh, <laughs> So, so that's then understanding the 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 temperament, the, the yes, temperament. of each person. And let me be great in what I do. I've I've had friends that had everything, guys. I'm talking about when I was younger. I had a girlfriend who was she was married. She she had a beautiful home. She had a beautiful car. She had a great job. I didn't have all those things, but I had this gorgeous smile. I was funny. And I had these 40 ounces. I'm with you. But she was jealous of that thing that I had. That thing. I'm like, yeah, you got everything. Yeah, let me have something. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> What you do, you do find some people who they want it all. And my thing is, I'm strong in this area. Let me do this. You're strong in this area. Let you do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's no competition. Right. You know, so that's, that, that's kind of how I am with, 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 with people. Um, you know, some people say you got to be loyal. I, mean, I think that you don't have to tell somebody to be loyal. I mean, if, if you are loyal, you're just going to be loyal. I don't have to, you know, <laughs> say I need loyalty. I mean, no, I just need for you to... If I do something for you, no, I'm not asking you to do something for me, but we need to have each other's back, whatever that yeah. looks like. Because you yeah. may have more than me, and I may come to you more than you come to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's <not> a cost. <laughs> I mean, because right. it's, it's not going to be equal, you know? It's not going to be equal. But, uh, yeah, Good. just just let me be great, girl. Let me... Let I'm gonna celebrate you. Thank you being great. Absolutely, and that's important. That is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we we can relate to some of what what you were saying. You know, sometimes it's like that in friendship. Sometimes it's and it depends on the season in which each individual yes. person is in yes. that determines who has to bear the weight a little bit more right. or okay. who has to you know carry the weight of the friendship. A little bit more because you know based on the seasons that each person is in and we talk about seasons um we didn't say this earlier and i heard you say it that you grew up in church but we are um, oh yes proud proud members, members <laughs> of a church here in jacksonville it's called saint paul missionary baptist oh, church really? are watching absolutely um, okay. please please tune in every sunday at nine o'clock we have service mm -hmm. in saint paul church of jacksonville on facebook for those of you that are watching need a church home or just want to stream some service pastor bishop hallelujah church. hallelujah Oh yeah! <laughs> in the room. No, <laughs> oh my God! I'm, I'm here God. for it. I am here. <laughs> but listen, something you didn't mention. She used to lead the church choir, the praise yes. team at the church. Yes. Oh my gosh, baby! I, ooh, lead in church choir. Cause you know what? Going back to what you said about friends, mm -hmm. everybody think they're great. Mm -hmm. But if it's my season to be great, horse me up, baby. Lift. Lift. <laughs> Even if I fall down a little bit. Lift, lift me back. Lift me but back sometimes up. I've had people come to me and say, 
oh, I can sing better than you. I said, you can, but you can't lead better than me in my season. That's good. Because I'm a leader first. You know what I'm saying? And I can take those transferable skills Mm -hmm. in any environment I go in. Mm Because I'm always first be a a person who follows. Any situation I've ever been in, I came in as a follower. Right. I observed. I observed needs. I observed uh, problems. And in my mind, I was like, okay, I can be a solution Mm. to this. I like that. I'm not going to come That's in and cause more problems. I'm going to come in and I'm going to be like, this is why I do what I do because I see that there is a need here. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to help you solve it. Right. Yeah. And that's how I always get bumped up. That's good. Like that. We have some people watching. Does anyone, those of you that are watching, if you have any questions for uh, Miss Watkins, Sophia, Lynn. Can I come call you Lynn? Hey, darling. Hello. <laughs> If you have any questions for yes. her just about the industry, maybe you have some, um, we have a couple of people that are on the live right now that are uh, aspiring singers, some of them actors. Um, if you have any questions in these last couple minutes, we'll give you like two or three minutes to post your comment yes. and we can ask her for you. Anybody. In the meantime, while we're waiting on them, um, did you cook today? No, ma'am. Me neither. No. What what is a typical Sunday meal in your house? Uber Eats. My kind of meal. (laughs) I'm so overcooking. Yes, Uber Eats. Uber Uber Eats. Oh, Lord. Everything. Everything. The other day I ordered steak. Baby, they had Outback on them. Outback. Outback. My steak well done with a sweet potato with all the (laughs) fixings. That's good. I like that. So we do have a question. Mm-hmm. Okay. When is your next video? Oh, I will be doing a video probably tomorrow because it's okay. been about seven days since I've done a video. One thing about the TikTok app, you you have to be consistent. Okay. Yes. And people can grow. I I was at thirty thousand in March, and when April came in, I grew four hundred thousand just being consistent. I post it every day. Wow. And you don't even have to judge your video. Let them judge it. Just put, do it, just throw it out there. You know, sometimes people try to critique their own work. Girl, you don't know what's funny. What you find funny, somebody else be like, huh? And so I just throw it out and do what I do. Mm-hmm. Video. So, and literally, like, it was like an overnight sensation. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And so TikTok, does it allow you to, like, um, sometimes Facebook allow you to um, pay for ads and sponsors and stuff. Tick, TikTok is not like that. No, but you can't make money from TikTok. A lot of people don't know this. Wow. You can make money from TikTok. If you get your numbers up, like for me, I just got my second brand deal from TikTok. It went, and they, they sent me a big uh, deep fryer. I'm going to try. What am I going to do with that? So what they're going to want me to do is do a video. <laughs> using their deep fryer okay I've, i have been able to book nathan he does song promos so let's say if you come you're a new artist you got a song and you want you know you don't have any tiktok followers but you want your your song to get you know some some exposure so they pay nathan to do that and then he wow. has another deal where he makes some a couple of zeros and some, some commas and he does one video a week with this particular brand deal, but it's lucrative. Wow. Some people are millionaires on these apps. They have million, they live in million dollar homes out here. I know, I know YouTube is one you can monetize on. You can yeah, make you can money. Monetize from. There. I didn't know 10, I didn't know TikTok. I'm assuming I don't know. I, I don't know if Facebook does that. Some say Instagram yeah. also. Facebook, you can also monetize like, you know, what you guys are doing right now with your videos, any video that you guys have over three minutes and you get people to watch it for over a minute, um, you can start monetizing that. So keep doing what you guys do. I applaud you guys for doing what you're doing. You don't have to start somewhere. Right. You, know what I'm you don't have to have everything to start. You guys look great. You have your background. It's good. Y'all look good. You know what I'm saying? But once you hit 30,000 one minute view videos, then you guys will start monetizing. And wow. I got a friend right now, he's monetizing his, his uh, channel. 
And let's say one video, he may he may make three to five thousand dollars just from the one video. So let's say if you guys have 20 videos. Come on, yeah. Come on. So Facebook, you can monetize on Facebook, YouTube, you can monetize on uh, Instagram is mostly um you can get brand deals from there. You know, if you get, yeah. And like, if you try to get like a record deal, they see your numbers, but it's like, you can't really monetize Instagram. You can right. make money because of your Instagram followers. Got you, but not yeah. monetize Instagram. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, we have another question. Yes. Did, you, um, did you learn most of your expertise in music business through trial and error, um, prior experience or mentorship? Mostly um, prior experience, okay. um, no mentorship. Um, you know, going back to what we said, people don't want you to be greater. You know, yes, so they, don't want to share, they don't want to share everything they know. Um, I read a lot. Anything that I want to know is Googleable. Mm -hmm. Anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I buy books I'm on, on the industry. Um, I, I read, I, I go to YouTube, I, whatever I need to do. But yes, experience, because I myself, like I said, I was a uh, professional singer. I traveled, I've written songs for people. Um, I, I, I did a, a tour with Howard Hewitt. I sang background for LaShawn Pace Rhodes. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of everybody, but yes, if, you know, just being around the industry, you'll, you'll learn some things. That's good. Yeah, but yeah, nope, didn't go to college for it. All right. Okay, so I think that's all. That was it, all that we have. So, um, Google, you you heard of Daily's watching. Google, oh, okay. <laughs> Google, it's Google. It's Google. Um, man, so we have this thing that we say, but Chantel closes us out, and um, it's the our slogan is, "Do you really want a best friend?" Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, she'll say her thank yous. And then she poses a question, and then we all say together, do you really want a best friend? And that's kind of how we end it, right? Okay. So we want you to participate because yes. we have everybody that comes on to the live to join in with us. Um, and it's, you know, it's fun. It's like, yes, you it know, is. welcome okay. to bring you into family. Okay. okay. So... <laughs> Uh, before we close, we want to thank you so, so very thank much for so um, agreeing to talk with us, yes. to take this hour and some change and just let us dig into who you are yes. and uh, how you have affected your son and how, you know, you encourage and motivate and move him into the right direction um, and how you move on your own, you know, because you are still your own woman. <laughs> So we want to thank you so very much. We thank also you. want to thank the people who are viewing and commenting. Um, and he said that was a tear. Do you really want a comedian, mommy? <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank you all for viewing you. in and tuning in and watching. Please um, like, share, repost. Um, we thank you all. We cannot do what we do without you all. Um, so in closing, we would like to pose the question. Do you really want a best friend? <laughs> no, no, no. We gotta do it again. We gotta do it ready. Are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. You ready all right, now? All right, all right, yeah. all right. Okay. So we would like to pose the question. Do you really want a best friend? Yes. Yeah. I got it. I got it. <laughs> And the answer is thank you. Thank you, thank you. so much. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye. See y'all later. Thanks for having me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>